I'm out here today in Tochigi Prefecture, about two hours north of Tokyo, to show you a bunch of new things. First one is my new daily van. We'll get to that later. The second new thing is new workshop, but the best one is over here. This is a brand new drift track being built. This track is called Sunrise Circuit. It used to be called Marua Autoland and it was a dirt trial track which has been here for about 50 years. There is drifting going on here and we'll get to that soon. But the story behind this place is back in the day rally driving was very popular in Japan because uh, most of the mountain roads back then were still just gravel, unpaved. So driving on gravel was more popular for a lot of people than driving on tarmac. But motorsports trends have changed and driving on tarmac is a lot more popular now. So they are converting this to tarmac. So this is gonna be called Sunrise Circuit, but there is also another venue here, which you could probably hear in the background. This venue is called Driving Pallet Nas and Nasu is the town nearby. So this is like a big open sort of Gymkhana, Autokhana style track as well. And it's a good place to practice drifting. <laughs> Annoying. So that guy's got his exhaust coming out of the fender. Look, it's already happening. The 8.6 is becoming a cheap, affordable drift car. I thought it'd take a bit longer, but hey, I'm cool with that. Nice exhaust. And at the same venue, we've got some grip guys as well, like this uh, CRX. Lightweight. So he said that they've got this down to about 800 kilos. There you go. Del that's been deleted, that's been deleted. Grip! <laughs> <laughs> and a uh, little beat. This venue is about two hours north of Tokyo, so it's sort of halfway between Nikko Circuit and Ebisu Circuit. So it's good to have another option to drift in the future. And this track is going to be opening in about two months, I think. So we need to get a car that can run for that, or at least try and borrow one. The next new thing I want to show you is this Novo Eyes workshop. There's a Tofu 86 here. Missing almost the entire rear end. Don't worry, it's not getting scrapped, it's getting repaired. If you've watched the channel for a while, you'd remember this car. Remember Morita-san from uh, Gunsai and the initial D video? That's, that's that car. Had a bit of a hit in the rear, which is why he's repairing it. And he used to have another workshop. He shut that one down, moved here, and now he has this Novo Eyes Motorsport at the venue. Good morning. Before before we talk to him, let's talk to the dog. Is his dog? Hachi, Hachi, come here. Are you scared of the camera? He's a nice dog. He's been cleaning up since I got here. So this is a cool little workshop. Morita has set up out here, much bigger than his old one. Four point lift, one floor lift, and an extra space over there. Morita, why do the D1 just the warming up still in this guy, Ma? This is Morita's D1 Grand Prix machine. Now, from the side, it looks okay, but if we go around the front, I'll admit it does look a bit weird having a stance this wide on an A86, but you got to get that lock, you got to get that rubber under there, look. I mean, have you seen what top level pro drift cars are like these days? You need that much grip and power to be able to play with them. And Morita is an A86 guy, as you can see, there's one there, there's one there. So he wants to stick with the 86s, which is why he built this thing. So it just ignore the state of it, it's not done yet. So it's still a four banger, SR20. It's a T67 25G. It's a 2.2 liter. It's a 2.2 liter BC stroker kit. But before we see this, we will quickly take out 
this Mazda Roadster onto the track and Moritz is going to show me the layout. And as you can see, it's snowing. Because this is uh, a really countryside area. You've got ski resorts and hot springs over there. Uh, there's a pig farm over there. There's cattle farms over there. And believe it or not, for Japan, there's a shooting range just over the road. And there's also a river just over that berm there. So uh, we should be good for sound you know, complaints and things like that. Uh, oh, these trees, these are cedar trees. Just over to the side, yeah. This is the sort of thing that they used to run a lot here on the dirt. Sort of a light tune rally style car with rally tires on it. And there's a mirage over here. So this is the part of the track where everyone's sitting up there watching so you just bake it. Ah, Ah, this looks really good. Uh. Ah, grip demo. Yeah, this one. Ah, This looks really good. Uh. <laughs> yeah, this looks like fun. <laughs> I think that's gonna be important. There you go, that's that's the business model. Build a track that kills tires and sell tires at the track. Oh, so now Moritz is going to take out his A86 for a quick drive. There's a firing range on the other side of the road with benches and everything. This is real countryside as far as Japan goes. Wait, so pig farming, guns, drifting. Tochigi is like the Japanese version of Texas. Speaking of Texas, I'll be going back to Texas this year. Lone Star Drift, May 2nd at the Houston Police Academy. Hope to see you there. Can we just take a moment to appreciate these spectator cars? S2000 on raised CE28 wheels and this UC Celsius on AME Shallons. Both perfect combinations, I think. So not quite set up yet, but still looks really responsive and obviously really quick because it's an A86 and it's nice and light. Is that Kotoshi Naka Taika ni Deru Tsumari? Karaoke Taikai Gurai. Karaoke Taikai? Okay. 
Yeah. No, I will. I will. I will fix up my own stuff, and we'll drive here pretty soon. I think because he said it's, it's going to open pretty soon, so I don't have much time. I need to do something. I'm going to get out here on day one, hopefully. <laughs> day one. Day one drift, Manioka. So I'm pretty keen to see what this track is going to be like once it's open. Also, it's cool to have a guy like Morita here at the actual track. Coffee. Oh yes, please. Ah, oh, cut the cut the arrow. Homono. Oh, I, I still, I still like, I still like canned coffee, but okay. <laughs> so we saw the new circuit. Now I want to show you my new van. Let's talk about that. My new 2007 R70 Toyota Noah. If you're a long time viewer of the channel, you've probably noticed me step out of a van when I go to visit events. Uh, that was my old Toyota Town Ace Noah Field Tourer version. It was an eight seater passenger vehicle based on a commercial vehicle with a few little accessories like spotlights that made it look like an off road car, even though it was only two wheel drive and two liter. I put about 200,000 kilometers on that van driving all over the country to all sorts of events and I've even done stupid stuff like weld the diff and take it snow drifting at Ebisu Circuit. I originally bought it because driving around in my Mark II was a bit too expensive uh, as a work vehicle when I was going to shoot events when I was working for a magazine. So I just thought oh, look, I'll just get a cheap van and just not care about it and it lasted like nine years. It got to the point where the uh, lack of maintenance I'd done on it sort of caught up with me and uh, a few problems showed up. Actually, let's go to where that van is now. Here's the old van. Battery's flat. That yeah, stinks. So first it started to have a bit of a misfire. Okay, let's check the plugs. So I pulled the lead off. The connector for the lead which plugs onto the spark plug broke off. Okay, so first thing wrong. Well, let's just check the rest of the plugs anyway. And as I am undoing this spark plug here with the wrench, I break one of these heater hose connectors. Like it basically split right there like chocolate. Coolant bled out everywhere. So now we have a bunch of problems. So the car was stuck in its car park for a few days while I had to order these T-pieces and also get leads and plugs. Changed everything, it's fine, but to be honest, uh, that was kind of the last straw. There's a fairly big oil leak. I think that's the oil pressure sensor, and it also has a fairly big leak out of the rear main seal. So that kind of was the end of it for this, so I thought I'd get rid of it. Right, if you're wondering what the engine is, it's a 3S FE. So technically, technically I could put a Beams engine with a five speed in this, but time to move on to be honest. All right, there's the old steering wheel. So the last thing I want to do before I get rid of this car forever is take off this wheel. These are really done up. Ugh. I've actually had this wheel uh, since I bought my very first drift car. Like this was the wheel on my first drift car back in Australia. It was a 180 SX that I bought pretty much stock and I proceeded to turn it into a piece of garbage and then made it pretty again. And before I sold it, I kept the wheel because I thought you know, it had sort of good karma on the wheel. Wait, you're supposed to leave the wheel on before you do that so you can pull it off. Okay, I've got to put the wheel back on. I forgot, I've done this in such a long time. Bit of lube. I ran two spaces on it. There we go. I'm gonna put this uh, stock one back on. I remember going through my toolbox a while ago thinking, why do I have this one random anti-tamper bit? Now I remember, it's for the uh, airbag, it goes in here. A wheel straight. There we go, back to stock. Obviously having a lot of stickers on it meant that uh, everybody knew it was me. 
Foreheads is the tire shop. Just a bunch of people I know. There's Kuma, ABC Circuit, Matsuri, Budonoki, Liberty Walk. They gave me that when I went there that one time. Oh, these were these guys I met in a car park in Fukushima. This is a random hand cut sticker. The guy ran up to me in a car park at a convenience store. And Alexi, I thought he was going to rob me. He wanted to put his sticker on. Abi Inochi. Seo san. We'll be doing something with him soon. G1 Grand Prix sticker. Chiba Damashi. I stuck this on on one of the videos. That is the petrol station I always go to in Nihon Matsu. Alright. These are the guys who have bought the van from Australia. This is a stencil that was sprayed on there. And from a truck shop. And that's when I went snow drifting and someone ran into me. Oh, one cool thing this van had was these old analog antennas. If that doesn't scream 1990s, I don't know what does. Also, I will be keeping the long champs. Uh, they're on there for now, so the next owner can get the car where it needs to go. But I will keep those. Thank you. New car. So it is kind of sad to get rid of that, but to be honest, this thing is so much better. So why another van as a daily? Well, it's big, it can carry lots of stuff, it's good for road trips, it's a good family vehicle, and it was cheap. And I think it looks really cool. So I like the Noah before, so I got another one. Oh, Alexi, other YouTubers are out flexing their, you know, supercars and stuff. This is what makes this channel possible. This is what allows me to drive it. This is what, actually look, I'll show you. This is the car that supports me whenever I go to ABC Circuit. Start in the back, look, this is, see look, toolbox. Good toolbox, this is really expensive uh, considering how small it is, but well worth it. It just sits here in the back. No stickers, unlike the previous van, it's not all covered in stickers yet. We will have to change that. It does have one sticker on it. This was stuck on there by some Finnish guys at the last Drift Matsuri. It's the uh, Toyota Hedgehog. But uh, we will have to change that. I have an entire bag of stickers that I can uh, stick on here. So we'll have to go through them all and work out which good ones can go on the windows. Also, because you're all thinking it, let's just uh, address that. Yes, this is terrible. Yes, these wheels are terrible. And they're covered in gunk. And they're too small. So really all I want to do is just lower it down a bit, some nice wheels, and it'll be a cool cruiser. Because it has this really nice lip on the front too. So interior black and grey. I wanted to get this colour because I like it. We got the uh, Itasha Broadway mirror on there. And also, this is the best button. Ready? Automatic passenger door. Another thing I like that makes this car good for road trips is if you fold the front seat flat and then you fold this one back, you get a nice long bed you can lie on. Obviously, it's not all flat, but just for getting a couple of hours sleep at a parking area, very comfortable. I've already used it a couple of times like this. So even though this thing is not really all that special, uh, it's nice to have a new daily that I can get around in. And I highly suggest that if you uh, thinking about getting a van, don't get a van because you'll never not want a van. The, that's how good they are for just getting around and doing stuff. Carrying people too. It can carry six foreigner adults very comfortably. And it's got very nice suspension too. I'm not really sure how I'm going to change it compared to the old van which was uh, because it was a commercial vehicle the front was torsion bar suspension and the rear was like the same type of suspension as an A86 with a solid axle. So there you go, new drift track, looking forward to that. And also a new van to get around to various events. Uh, as far as the Skyline goes, it's still seeing at Ebisu. Uh, I've got to go and have a bit of a meeting with uh, the people who are going to be working on it and see what we can do about that. And same goes with the Mark II, but to be honest, I'm just going to get it to a state where I can drive it and take it to a track. Just even if it's not that great to drive, uh, it'd be good to you know, see exactly what's wrong with it, because I'm still not entirely sure. Like, the clutch is okay or whatever, but, uh, you know, whatever. It's just sitting there doing nothing. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. <clears throat> Alright, one, two.
take Smith. 